Today, guys, I want to share with you how we can rebuld this Elementor homepage tabs widget. And this is a bit of an interesting one because you'll notice underneath each tab tile is a description included. And this isn't a standard feature of the tabs widget because usually you just get a title. We don't let you input a description. And on top of that, if we look on mobile, what we've done is opened up every tab and done some reordering so that the tab content, which is the images in this case, is actually sitting above the tab titles. So this sort of opening all the tabs up and reordering things, it isn't standard behavior of the tabs widget alongside this description. So I wanted to figure out how they've done that and I can share with you today how we can rebuild this. So to start us off, I've set the page up here ready for the tabs widget to be added. Now this page, it just contains the main container here and this main container, it's set to box width and it's 80 rem wide. It's also set to column and the zero gap set. Now within style, we've got a background gradient here and this just goes from sort of an off-white color down to white. So this is white down at the bottom and off-white up here. And that's a linear gradient set to 180 degrees. Within advanced, we've just got 40 pixel left and right padding. I've added 200 at the top just for some spacing, but that's not important. What they've done is added 40 to the left and right on desktop. And now if I go back to layout, what they've also done on tablet is reduced 80 pixel to 52, sorry, 80 rem to 52 rem. And on mobile, they've reduced it further to 32 rem. And then back to tablet, the padding is now 32 pixels left and right and on mobile it's now 24 because it's originally 40 pixel so that's what we've done for the main container and then this inner container is just a full width container again it's set to column vertical with zero gaps within style this one now has a background of just solid white so no background gradient and then within advanced we've just got some uh, padding rem on the top and bottom so we've got six on top nine on bottom uh, and then on tablet it goes to five and a half seven and a half and mobile two and a half to three and a half so that's everything sort of pre-set up i've also added the two headings here and then the carousel underneath i've just put carousel rather than having to build it but that's this one here so now i can just insert our heading because this is actually a separate heading widget and our tabs widget so I'll go back in here now and I'll start by just clicking on this heading and I'll add my first heading and then the tabs widget as well. So I'll just search and add. So to start with, I'll just paste my heading in, dream it, build it. And then this is a H3 tag. And then within style, I've set up a global typography for the heading. Now I'll in include on the screen now all your typography and color settings you'll need to achieve this design. So you can just pause the video if you need to, to get these. And then the text color is just black. And then within advanced, we've got a negative three uh, rem margin on the bottom. And what this does is it just pulls the tabs upwards. So the tabs will now sit alongside the title. And this is what Elementor I've done here. So you'll notice the title is alongside the content of the tabs so they've done that with negative margin and then the width they've set a custom width of 33.6 rem don't ask me why they've used this value but that's what it is and then they've aligned it they've aligned self to end so the title sits over here the last thing to do is just add a little bit of custom css and i'll include this css or a link to the code pen in the video description but what this is doing, so this is code for dream it, build it heading. This code is basically just making sure that the heading never falls below 50% width of the parent inner container. So you'll see here max width, width 50%. And then all this is doing here is taking into account the little gap here that's between the tabs content and the tabs titles. So that's everything we need to do for the heading. Now for the tabs, I'd recommend just going into the tabs widget down to custom CSS here within advanced and just straight away copying in all the CSS from the code pen. So that's here code for tabs widget underneath the heading code. So if we copy and paste all of this and what I'll do is I'll come back to the code at the end of the video and explain generally what's going on. So we can now just paste that into the custom CSS and this will help us 
not see such a messy design as we build because a lot of the styling is done here. So then within the tabs widget, if we now go back to content, the direction has been set to after. So the tabs are on this side. The justify has been set to start. The width, this is where it now matches the width of the heading here, dream it, build it. So if you remember, that was 33.6 rem. And then the alignment has been set to start. So we line up here. So you'll see now that these are lining up with the heading. And then within additional settings, you can leave this as mobile portrait. So that's everything done within content. It's set the actual tab items themselves because this is where you'll notice we only have a title field, whereas Elementor have got both a title in bold and a description underneath. So to achieve that, what they've done is added a little bit of HTML in the title field. And that's within the code pen here. I've included the sort of structure of the HTML they've used. So you'll notice they've got the title here in bold, and then they've got a span with a class of tab description so they can target it with CSS. And that's the description here. So that's how they've achieved this effect. So if I just copy one of these in now, the first one, into the first tab you'll notice basically what happens here is you can already see the effect coming taking shape so now we've done that we've also added a custom svg for the icon so what i've done is i've just taken these from elementor's website but this is the first one here with the square sort of image so if i insert that and now what i'll do is i'll just speed through the rest of the tabs and add the rest of the content So now we've added all of our content within the tab items here. You'll see our tabs now have the little description included. So now we've done that, we can go into the style tab and start styling these up. So the gap between tabs is zero. The distance from content, that's 3.5 rem. So that's this gap in the middle here. Uh, background type for normal, we want the background to be transparent for all of these, for normal, hover and active. And then the border type, we want to be none. So I'll do the same for hover, background type, transparent, border, none. And then for active, background type, transparent. But this time, we do want to add a solid border just on the bottom of one pixel. And we'll make this black. Alongside this, we'll add a box shadow. So this is just going to be a very subtle box shadow. So it'd be black, but 0 0.05 opacity. So a very subtle box shadow here with horizontal set to zero, vertical will be four, blur will be 24 and spread is zero. And once we've done that, we can now add padding of two rem. So I've already got rem set here, so two rem. And then that's everything done for the tabs. The titles, we want a global typography. I've got mine here, tab titles. But again, if you want to pause the video earlier, you'll be able to see what this is set up as. And then the color of these we want as near black. So that again, this is another global uh, color. And then on hover, we want to turn this from near black to tabs title hover here. So that's sort of a, a light gray color. And then on active, we'll turn this back to near black. So you'll see here when I hover, we get this sort of very light sort of faded gray, but it's black by default. And then icon. We want this to be positioned before, which I think it is by default anyway. And then we'll set the size to 24 pixel, the spacing to 16 pixel, and the color to transparent. And we'll make sure that's set for every single scenario. So normal, hover, and active, we want it to be transparent. And that's everything done for icon. Content, we don't need to touch anything. And then same with advanced, we don't need to do anything within here because we've already added our custom CSS. And that's everything done for the tabs, except now we can start looking to add our content within each tab, which is basically just the image. So for the images, really simple. We'll just click on our tab one, we'll add an element and we'll drag in an image. So the first image, we'll select it. I've got it here, it's this one. And then all we need to do is go into style, give it a border radius of 0.5 rem. 
uh, to give it that curved edge, not 50 rem. So that's the curved corners here. And then within advanced, we've also got a fade in motion effect. So entrance animation, fade in. And they've got this set to fast. So that's it for the image. And I'll just duplicate this in every tab now. So now we've got all our images added, I'll just publish this. And this is essentially complete now on desktop. And we'll see as we flick through our tabs, everything's behaving as we'd expect with the images fading in and the tab titles and descriptions looking as expected. If we go back to Elementor's site, it's exactly the same. And now all we need to do to get this finished off is a bit of responsivity. But the good thing about this design is there's barely anything to do responsivity wise. You'll be pleased to hear so if we go to tablet portrait first the first thing i'm going to do is tweak this header so within advanced the only thing we need to do here on tablet is set the rem uh, bottom margin to minus 2.5 rem and then if we go to mobile it's then set to zero rem on mobile so i'll just unlink this and leave it as zero and then the width is now set to full width and align self start so that's the heading done and now if i go back to the tabs widget and i go into tablet portrait again again there's very minimal things to do in here so if i just go into style it's literally just the distance from content is now free rem and then if i go into mobile there's just a couple of things to do within here in the active state so the border width, we don't want a border, so we'll set that to zero. And then the padding top, we just want to change this from 2 rem on every side to padding top of 1.25 rem. And then finally, within this tab, we can go into icon on mobile and change the spacing to 8 pixels. And then the last thing we need to do for responsivity, still on mobile, is going to each tab here. So this is the content that houses our images. So the first one, tab one, we just want to give some padding on the top of 16 pixels. And then for every other tab, it's 26 pixels. And then once we've completed all this, that's everything done for responsivity. Because as I said earlier, the custom CSS is dealing with a lot of the styling. So now the final responsivity is done. We'll just check it's all working once we've published it. So I'll publish this and preview. So this is it on desktop. So we can see it full screen, all functioning as you'd expect. Images fading nicely. We've got the sort of light gray hover effect. We've got the box shadow on active tabs with a bold title as well. And of course, we've got the description as well. And then if we inspect this on tablet size, it sort of just shrinks down. And then it still functions exactly the same. Images fade in. Hover effects are the same. And then on mobile, this is where everything stacks and opens up. So the content, the images is now above the titles. And that's exactly the same on Elementor. If I inspect this. We've got the content here, so the images above the titles. So that's now fully complete. And I'll just show you some of the custom CSS and what it's doing. So I'll go back to the code pen now. And again, I'll include this in the video description. And I'll just go through some of the key stuff because you'll be able to go through this and see it's all quite basic what it's doing. It's mainly just setting up things you can't do within the widget. And it's mainly sort of spacings sizings you'll see here we've got an opacity setting uh this is the important one here for our tab description because this is what's targeted here the tab description so if you want to customize how your description looks you'll be able to do that here and then here we've got the tab description again set as display block when the tab is active so this is how it's only visible when you're on the active tab and it's not visible all the time because it's displaying none by default. Here we've got 
this is a little bug fix I've set. Basically, what I noticed is on hover here, you'll see it's light text with no border or anything. But when you knock this off slightly by changing your screen size, it knocks it out and you get your border and you don't get your lighter gray font color. And this is Elementor's actual website. So this is a little bug within the within the widget. So this is just a little bug fix that I've applied here. So that's what that is. And then the rest of this here is max width 767. So this is on mobile. This is basically how they've set up the full content to be displayed because everything has been set to block the tab descriptions. And then here is how it's been reordered. So it's been manually ordered in the order that we want it. So that's how that's been set up. And I think that's more or less all the key stuff for the custom code. Again, you'll be able to go through it and you'll recognize what a lot of it's doing. If you want to post a comment or ask me anything, you can do on the video. But yeah, that's this one complete. Another one conquered from Elementor's homepage. So I hope you've enjoyed this one, guys. I think it does just add a little bit something extra to your tabs widget. We can now add a description and we can now open them, open them up fully on mobile. So yeah, if you have liked it, feel free to give it a like, comment or even better subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one.